Belladonna of Sadness is an old anime movie that I've seen recommended here and there. So one night when I was bored, I fired this baby up and gave it a watch and I was very confused. See, this anime is like nothing I've ever seen before or since. Like I've actively tried to find other movies that have a similar vibe and I can't. The animation and presentation is incredibly unique and striking. There were moments where my jaw dropped because of the inventiveness and creativity on display with this watercolor style, with the way objects would shift and morph into one another seamlessly. The most mind-boggling sequence was easily this one, where it depicts the Black Plague spreading all over, killing loads of people and leaving destruction in its wake. The way it shows this is just nuts. These impressive buildings crumbling as civilizations collapse into a titanic tidal wave of crisp black and white drowning in itself, into nothing, until people scatter like dust. The fragility of society, of these monuments we build, it feels so real with how the art sells that to us. And the thing about this movie that consistently strikes me the most as I watch through these incredibly impressive scenes is that putting it into words just, it's not possible. It does it a disservice. Simply watching it and experiencing it speaks for itself. When I'm sitting with it, I, I can't help but think, how did they do this? Who thought of this? Using such a limited color palette and yet making the intent so clear, it takes my breath away. There are multiple sequences like this too that push a boundary and do something amazing in a way that only animation can. And moments like these, they're a part of why I love animation so much and spend way too much time talking about it. That ability to create something out of practically nothing, to depict things that I can't imagine being depicted in a remotely equivalent way in any other medium. That's what this is all about. However, this isn't the whole movie. Nah, even more of it is composed of these still images with actors speaking over top of them, or sometimes a narrator will talk while a bunch of images scroll by. Normally, this is the sort of thing that might bother me. But here? Surprisingly, not really. Instead, it gives the more bombastic sequences room to breathe, and makes them all the more striking when they pop up. Because sometimes you'll get a drawn out section that's so still and quiet, and then BAM! Some wildly animated character will crack through that quietness in a way that's just… shocking. There are moments where we're allowed to sit with these characters through their most horrifying experiences, but also moments that dive into that horror with reckless abandon. Really, to me, it injects this whole thing with a certain rhythm and flow, this wonderful back and forth between quiet and chaotic. The use of music definitely adds to this too, where certain scenes almost turn into bizarre music videos of sorts, the animation lining up with the beats and tone of the pieces themselves. Again, I've never seen any other piece of animation like this, and I absolutely love it for that reason. Does that mean it's for everyone though? No. The subject matter here is divisive to say the least, with a lot of explicit uncomfortable imagery and depictions of violence against women that are hard to watch. So if that sort of thing bothers you, well, I don't think I can recommend this. Similarly, if you're the type of person who has no interest in still images or views animation as more impressive based on how many frames are involved or pure movement, then you'd probably be better served to just look up individual clips. However, I truly think that would do a disservice to this whole experience. Seeing this movie for the first time, it was memorable, powerful, and it stuck with me. Sometimes I can't help but go back and watch my favorite moments, and every time I end up feeling like I should have watched the whole movie instead. It just had that impression on me, and it leaves me floored by how beautiful and evocative it can be. All this is to say that, if you're looking for an animated trip that's equal parts weird and beautiful, I can't recommend Belladonna of Sadness enough. At least as far as I know, there's nothing else quite like it and it's certainly an interesting experience.